Dr. Iketa, welcome. It is wonderful to get to talk to you. Uh, please introduce yourself and tell us, what is Trish? Absolutely. My name is Emmanuel Riquera, and I'm the Chief Medical Officer at the Translational Research Institute for Space Health, and I'm also faculty at Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. The Translational Research Institute for Space Health, or TRISH, uh, we're partners to the Human uh, Research Program at NASA. And one of our main goals is to find and fund new disruptive research that is high risk but potentially high reward, uh, with the end goal of keep uh, humans healthy both in space and on Earth. And we have been working with commercial spaceflight missions uh, since last year, and Axiom-1 is our fourth commercial spaceflight mission. That's really fascinating. Can you tell us a little bit more about your primary areas of focus or what you're studying on this mission? Yeah, so Trish uh, focuses mainly on the high priority areas uh, of, of human um, spaceflight research. And um, I would say the three highest priority areas are radiation, um, behavioral uh, issues that come from being isolated and confined in space. And the third one is how your body changes uh, while you're in a different uh, gravity field, either a, a zero G environment like in space or during different gravity fields uh, when you are uh, in, in the moon or Mars. Okay, interesting. So what kind of systems or hardware are you working with specifically to capture this data? For this mission, the hardware that we're using is uh, absolutely optimized uh, to provide number one, the, the highest quality data, while uh, you know being still easy to use, easy to implement, uh, and being the lowest burden to, to, the, um, uh, to the astronauts. So to collect all of these data, for example, uh, vision changes, we have been using a, a small device is uh, roughly the size of a shoebox that you can see here, I have this here with me. So this is basically like having uh, an optometrist uh, on a box. Basically, the only thing that you have to do is just, just grab it, uh, put it on your eyes, uh, look uh, at an object that is roughly six feet away from you, and after a few seconds, you get uh, a prescription of, of your glasses as right here. So as I was saying, um, if, if there's any changes on, on astronauts during these missions, we'll be able to see how the changes with this device. Uh, we're also looking, I was mentioning, at behavioral changes, how uh, being in, in, in an isolated and confined environment has any behavioral aspects. And for this one, we have been using a, a small tablet like this one, also to test the sensory motor adaptation, the, the balance disorders and the space motion sickness. Uh, we're using a device like this. And for each of the of the crew members, we have a set of hardware like this, and um, uh, it fits uh, the, the four sets of hardware fits on a on a medium size um, suitcase. So it is it is really easy to move uh, wherever it needs to go uh, for for launch and uh, and landing. That's wonderful. So, what are some of the intended outcomes or goals of the research you're doing? Yeah. So some of the outcomes uh, and one of the Main applications, um, number one for spaceflight that, that, that we want to get from, from this research is that short duration missions like uh, Axiom 1 are very, very relevant in the context of Artemis missions. When we go back to the moon, the first missions are going to be roughly the same duration as, as Axiom 1. So anything new that we learn from these missions is going to be absolutely valuable. Really, every new piece of data that we collect in spaceflight could potentially solve and be that, that uh, last piece of the puzzle that we're looking to, to complete uh, what we need to know. Well, Dr. Riketa, thank you so much for speaking with us today. We wish you the best of luck. It is my pleasure. Thank you.